Going to do a calibration on the Heathkit IM5284, but first, some plans I have for it. Afternoon, YouTube. It is 1.50 in the afternoon on a Wednesday afternoon. Uh, said afternoon a lot, didn't I? Just want to make sure <laughs> you knew what time it was. Uh... I was out in the garage yesterday looking for a bolt and I ran on to these. These are hemostats and I don't remember where they actually even came from but uh, they're rusty so I'm going to put those in some vinegar and let them sit a while clean those up give me an extra set of those. Um, this morning I worked on my dryer my clothes dryer um, Lucky Larry had mentioned uh, possibilities of lint fires and uh, I kind of wondered, worried about that myself because I know, or I didn't know, but I was pretty sure the uh, ductwork on mine was clogged up because it wasn't drying and that's pretty much a sure sign they're not dry or they're clogged up because they're not drying. Uh, I'll quit playing with that stuff over there. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, I took it all apart, and yes, it was clogged up. Uh, I think the main culprit was the uh, hose going out to uh, the uh, line, that, which goes outside. It was pretty much packed there, and uh, but I went in and cleaned the rest of it out too. The uh, little ductwork in the back of it, and got it all working pretty good, I think. Lexi's going to try it out here in a little bit, I believe. She's going to do a load of laundry, so we'll see if it works any better. Uh, one of the uh, and the guy that uh, I watched didn't mention this, but one of the uh, tip-offs for, you know, your dryer being, you know, clogged up like that is the, uh, when you pull your little lint filter out and clean to clean it off, you know how you do that. You're supposed to do that every time. Anyway, there's nothing on it, basically. There's maybe a little bit on there, and there's, you know, it's showing right there that it's not, the air's not flowing through there, so. Uh, trying to schedule a... Uh, an appointment. I have a colonoscopy. You remember, you know, you guys know what those are. Uh, anyway, um, like I said, the, uh, uh, doing that and uh, did cleaned out the dryer. I had somebody come by look at the car. My Cavalier is on, on uh, not on anything. It's just sitting out at the end of my driveway with a for sale sign. I'm going to flash the for sale sign up and uh, you know and show you what that looks like and uh, basically this guy had you know he's he drives a truck well he doesn't drive a truck he drives a pickup truck to back and forth to work he was wanting something a little bit better on gas and I was telling him all about it so he's supposed to come back this weekend and look at it yeah and the car wouldn't start so you know I've got to charge that battery up I knew it was going to be a problem with that because it wouldn't start the other day when I moved it around but anyway, uh, I do have that out there, and I, I thought I would leave it out there for a while. It's a little inconvenient for me to get my other car in behind it, but I can just back in and, and pull in pretty easy. It's not too hard. So uh, I figure I'll leave it there for a couple of weeks, and if it doesn't, and no action there, I'll put it on Craigslist or something uh, and see if I can't get it out of here. Um, as you can see by the, uh, as you should have saw by the, uh, for sale sign, the uh, not really asking a lot, a lot for it. I mainly want it out of here, and I, I mainly don't want to have to take it to the scrapyard. <laughs> so I just figure if somebody wanted to, to buy it for that, then you know I'll sell it for that. So uh, it's, you know, after I get out and talk to people about it and tell them exactly what it is, it really is not that bad a car. <laughs> but uh, anyway, like I say, that's that's what we're gonna go for. Like I say, that's that. Uh, I have on the bench in front of me here. And I didn't really mean to talk for 46 minutes like Bill did. <laughs> I had to laugh when I saw that. Uh... <laughs> you know, for him to actually say that I had even a, a close shot at being the Flapping King, that was just funny. I'm sorry. But uh... <laughs> he, he's the undisputed king. And probably always will be. But... Uh... I like it like that. So, anyway, I have on the bench here in front of me the uh, IM uh, 
5284 that I mentioned in the last video and um, I, uh, I have been scheduling my videos I don't know if you guys have noticed that but 6 a.m. <laughs> and I had built up a, a number of them and today this is Wednesday this was the last one I had up there so I'm, I'm having to kind of scramble now and, and find something to make a video of but I mean I don't have to put one up every day but you know I kind of like to uh, but anyway this um, 5284 is on the bench and I do have well that's not it the calibration procedure there it is um, for the uh, aforementioned meter and I thought we would uh, go through that and see how close it is I mean I know it's a little off because we, we play around with it a little bit but uh, anywho that's uh, that's what we're going to try to do here. Uh, I'm going to try to find, <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I should have this at a certain spot, but I don't. It's a little voltage standard that Bob made me. Um, it, it will be in one of these things where all the, the built kits were, I think, or the kits that need building or something. Uh, it'll be in one of those boxes, and I'll, I shouldn't have any problem finding it. Nothing like the tube I had a problem finding anyway. But um, Also, I have uh, some plans for this. Uh, once we get it calibrated and and all that good stuff uh, I have a bad habit of uh, leaving the power on on a uh, battery operated equipment and you guys remember the Sencor I ran the batteries down there I don't know how many times but uh, so what I'm going to do is build a little AC adapter for this now this has a dual uh, positive negative 9 volt supply in it because it uses two 9 volt batteries and uh, so the one I have in mind is uh, one I'm going to use uh, for this purpose and uh, I'm going to fly some pictures up it is a uh, step up I think I forget exactly what they call it but it, you'll see it in the picture and it basically you put in 3.3 uh, .3 to 8 volts in that range and it will provide uh, plus and minus 9 volts out and uh, I think a sufficient, pretty sure a sufficient uh, uh, amperage to run this little meter. And uh, Bob seems to think it'll work. And I think he was mentioning something about one he's building like that, but he's building it more or less from discrete components instead of the little uh, module I'm buying from China. Now the module I bought was uh, three, I think three dollars thirty-five cents, something like that. Um, so it's a good little deal and the uh, old AC adapter uh, 6 volt AC adapter that I bought along with it uh, was I think 5 something and uh, I bought some some of those uh, pass through jacks and I think they were $1.56 something like that but uh, really not that much to, to build it and I think what I'm going to do is take it that spot right there now that's where the uh, if you buy their uh, AC adapter for these this series of uh, kits that's where that was they, they came with a new blank there with the uh, power supply module thing mounted in there so I'm that's where I'm gonna put it it's just a round AC uh, adapter type you know standard type plug and that's what I'll use for that now second part of that you can see on the front here and that's the uh, switch that somebody added and I have, I've had several people that commented on the uh, video said this is not part of the original one and I didn't think it was but what I'm going to do there is put a pilot light LED whatever you want to call it um, and that'll be a good spot for it really I think that's an exit place I can take that out and do away with it I'm going to open this up and we're going to take a look at the uh, you know what what it's cook to and things like that some several people wanted to know that too so we'll do that and let me get my other camera going and I'll, this is going to be kind of a short not short video but I'm not actually going to do the calibration today or right this time that will be on a separate video so we're just basically taking a look at some of the things I'm going to do here and then uh, we'll get to the calibration later on so let me set up the other camera and we'll come right back all right, we're on the uh, other camera now, as you can see, and I have in front of me the um, Heathkit IM5284 opened up. This is the uh, switch in question. Now you can see, let's look a little bit closer at it. 
you can see there is a resistor coming off of it, a potentiometer here, trim cap, whatever you want to call it. And there's two little tiny wires going over here to this circuit board. Now I haven't actually uh, looked at the uh, schematic or whatever to find out where that goes, but uh, basically one, let's see, one goes here at the top, one goes here, this point. So we've got two uh, places there they go, and uh, not really sure. Uh, let you guys that know better than I do uh, maybe what those could be. And uh, so, uh, like I said, this is the little blank I was talking about. We'll take and drill a hole right in the center of it for the uh, uh, jack. I couldn't think of what I was talking about. The jack of the uh, AC adapter to fit into. And so that will work out rather nicely, I think. And that's the plan on that. So what I'm going to do here is take this uh, switch out and those wires I'll just cut off. And uh, so like I say, I'm definitely not going to use them. So uh, I mean, I'm not going to use uh, that switch any longer. I, I, I tried, you know, switching it when I had it working yesterday to see and it didn't really do anything. I could tell. Maybe it does. I don't know. But uh, and also I think I'm going to put a C cell battery in this. I believe that's what it takes. Yeah, if I can figure out which end goes where. Which, uh, they look the same both ways. But I don't see any plus or minus or anything like that. I'll look at that a little closer with the, uh, what do you call it? See if I can figure that out. So, anyway, let me take this off and I'll bring you right back. Alright, now I'm back with you once again. And the uh, piece has been, or the uh, switch has been taken out here. And I think that's going to accommodate a, uh, I believe, a 5 millimeter uh, LED. I've got the holders for the 5 millimeters. I think we'll just fit right in there perfectly. And we'll put that in. Now, the problem I'm having, uh, I'm not really having it, but is I'm sure the uh, on-off switch, and I know, I know this for a fact, probably doesn't switch, or even if it does switch the battery voltage, it does it in a way that... Uh, I don't know exactly how it works. I'll have to look at the circuit, but I want the LED to come on with the on-off switch, obviously, but I want it to be off of the AC adapter power supply before it gets to the module to switch, to, to convert it to um, uh, the dual 9-volt plus and minus supplies. I would like that. Now, I don't know if that's possible or not, but uh, that's what I would like. So, uh, may get it, give that a shot and see, you know, if anybody has a schematic for this and you have an idea, let me know, but uh, that's what I'm thinking about doing. I guess I can do it on the uh, battery voltage if I have to, but I'd rather not mess with the uh, balance between the two sides. I mean, I don't know how, how critical that is, but I'd rather not have to do that if I have to get away or way around it. So uh, I might even consider just uh, rerouting the uh, power switch to where it, it turns that, uh, like I say, there'll be a line coming out of here that goes to that module and then put the switch in there. And, you know, that would that would definitely work. So uh, we'll see what it looks like. And that let me show you what what I dug out of this thing. So we can see. Now this is basically just a switch, uh, two pole single throw. No, I mean single pole two throw. That's what I meant. So double double pole single throw. Yeah. No single pole. I, I get them backwards, but you know what I mean. It switches two different positions. Actually three with the in center, but. Uh, probably center off I would say anyway like I say there's a resistor and a, a trim pot here I don't know the value of either one to tell you the truth I was looking to see if I could see it on there but I don't and these two tiny wires here I don't I have no idea what they were gonna go to or anything like that so what they were doing it's obviously a modification of some kind and uh, you know is what it is but uh, I don't think it was something I wanted. I, I, 
you know, and just like the model I'm going to do with this power supply, and that's that's nothing that can be uh, not reversed. I mean, it can be easily reversed. Uh, but uh, in fact, I could leave the batteries in if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. But uh, something like this, it leaves a hole in the can. I, I don't really care for that. Now, the little blank part, that's that's different because that's not really the case. That's just a little blank that comes with it. So, uh, anywho, you'd think I'd know how to put a nut on by now, wouldn't you? All right, that's that. Let me uh, get this done with, and I'm going to, like I say, go ahead and do the um, calibration on a different video, and uh, we'll go from there. So you guys have a pleasant day. It's 2.10 now in the afternoon, and thanks for watching, and we will see you.